In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The groom's family were desperate. They had already spent more money than was prudent, more than they could afford, but the wine was running out. At the very least, their guests were going to be disappointed. Well, certainly, they'd be the laughing stock of Cana. Realistically, all of Galilee would soon know how poor they were, how bad their prospects, how unfortunate their new daughter-in-law. Quite possibly, the poor couple and all his family would be reviled and ridiculed. Conceivably, they'd even be out economic opportunities. I mean, who would ever want to do business with a family that drank too much and couldn't pay the tab? Who would even want to admit knowing a family infamous for being bad hosts and irresponsible in-laws. You see, friends, if we don't understand that desperation verging on despair which the groom's family felt, then we won't understand the significance and the magnificence of what our Lord does at the wedding feast of Cana. He's not just keeping the party going. He's revealing himself as the sole rescuer of the human race. But like a man hanging off the side of the cliff, we can't be rescued until we let go of whatever false hope we're clinging to. We have to let go of that funny little sideways twig that you see in the cartoons so that we can reach up to the hand of the hero and be hoisted to safety. We have to let go of our need to save ourselves so that Jesus can save us. This, I think, is one of the great lessons of our Lord's first miracle. The groom's family was in desperate straits until they asked for help. They were in terrible trouble until they gave up trying to solve their problems for themselves. It was only when they owned up to their weakness and acknowledged their helplessness and repented of their need for control that the miracle arrived. It was only when they stopped staring the disaster in the face and started looking instead in the face of Christ and his blessed mother that they found relief. Friends, how often we want to hide our weakness and our fear. How often we insist on being in control of our lives and really everything else, too. How often we cling to some pretended self-salvation instead of grasping the hand which God extends to sinners. How often we put our trust in ourselves, or in men, or in princes, rather than in our Lord and Our Lady. That way leads only to ruin and shame and regret and sorrow. Only the way of trust and surrender to Almighty God leads to rescue and joy and relief and jubilation. 
only the way of confidence in God and an utter refusal to hope in creatures leads us away from the inferior wine and toward the new and better and all-surpassing wine which our Lord wishes to give us. Today, then, we resolve to cast off now and forever whatever false and worldly hopes we cling to. We resolve to turn to Jesus, not knowing what he may give us, but knowing that it will be good and for our good, knowing that it will surpass our understanding. We resolve, in short, to entrust everything we have and everything we are to him who alone can save us and bring us joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget to click subscribe and click the bell to be notified of future videos.